Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar Halacha. And here's a brand new Halacha for you, and it's for Tuesday, 10th day of January, 12th day of Teves. Here we go. We're continuing on in our little unit about Tefillah Saderach, those laws about the special prayer that you say when you travel on a trip. The Maram of Rutenberg had the opinion that because Tefillah Saderach doesn't start with its own bracha, like it just starts with the words Yehi Ratzon instead of the words Baruch Atah Hashem. So he held that it was appropriate to try to orchestrate, to try to get a bracha to be in front of your Tefillah Saderach. How would you do that? You would like, let's say... Um, Maybe you went to the bathroom and didn't say Asher Yatsar yet, so you would say the bracha of Asher Yatsar, and then as you complete that bracha, you continue on and say Tfilas Haderach, so that a bracha preceded the Yehi Ratzon paragraph. Or you could finish up eating a piece of cake, say an Al Hamichya bracha, and as you finish the Al Hamichya, then you go right into the the uh, the Yehi Ratzon paragraph, and that too would like cap it off with a bracha at the beginning. Or you could just say Bori Nefashos on some food that you ate, and that bracha would be the beginning of the, your Yehi Ratzon paragraph. Um, Rav Belsky said if, let's say, you didn't just finish a food or you didn't just go to the bathroom and you are in the car driving for the last 20 minutes, so he says another option is to just start a food, like make a Bori Pri Ha'etz on a piece of apple, take a bite of the apple, and swallow, and then that bracha that you just made on the apple could be the beginning of the paragraph of the Yehi Ratzon. Um, if, let's say, you can't make one of these brachas, you don't have a food available or whatever, you don't have to do this. You could still say Yehi Ratzon the way it's written in the, all the pamphlets or your sitter or whatever. It's just nicer to add a bracha before it by doing some other bracha-worthy thing right before your tefillah haderach. If you don't have one, it's fine. Um, Rav Belsky says also, if you are saying the Tefillah Saderach for somebody else in the car, and you're going to say a bracha before your Yehi Ratzon, so think for yourself if it's appropriate. I'm making this al for the piece of cake that me and my partner just ate in the car as we traveled, and I'm going to make an al for both of us, and then right afterwards I'll be saying the Yehi Ratzon paragraph also to fulfill it for both of us. Okay, now, a little bit more about the specifics about when you say Tefillah Saderach. If you're leaving from your house and you're driving through 20 minutes of city traffic, it's not really appropriate to say the Tefillah Saderach while you're still in your city. It's after you leave your city, pretty much. So one loose way that, it's not loose, but I mean, it's hard to know how to apply this. The way the Gemara used to say it was like after you've passed the last house of your city. See, in these big cities that we live in today, it's hard to know when I've passed the last house of the city. So what we have here is uh, in a book called Halachically Speaking. So Rabbi Leibovitz put together some examples based on some famous New York trips. Like, for example, if you know some of this geography, if you're going to the Catskill Mountains from New York City. So New York City, like, when does New York City end? That's like a hard one. So he said that when you get to the George Washington Bridge, and you're just crossing the George Washington Bridge, that would be like called, I left New York City, and I'm going on one of the bridges that, you know, crosses the river on the outside of the city, now I'm on my way to the Catskills. That's when would be the appropriate time to say, Tefillah on a trip to the mountains outside of New York City. Now, if you didn't say it there, then he'd say, well, if some of you know at the Palisades Parkway, just after a couple of minutes, it starts to get all green and you've clearly left New York City behind you. Then at about exit two of the Palisades Parkway, if you know that area, that would be the appropriate time to say Tfilas Aderach after leaving New York City. If you're coming home from the Catskills and there's so many different camps and everything up there in those mountains, so that, that main artery that leads everybody out of there is Route 17. So he kind of, just to give you an idea, he says it's when you get on Route 17, the main artery out of all those little villages in the Catskills, when you're on Route 17, that's when you start to do it. Try to apply to your city some application of, uh, of this. If you're going from New York to any of those neighboring neighborhoods that are called New Jersey, so you're pretty much in one continuous city on your whole trip if you're doing that. And uh, most rabbis say you wouldn't say Tefillah Zedarek if you're in one continuous city situation the whole time. If you're going, let's say, New York to Lakewood, New Jersey, and you're going to pass some wilderness uh, kind of sort of along the way. So, you know, again, one of the big bridges, let's say the Verrazano Bridge, or maybe when you cross the... Um, 
the Outer Bridge Crossing or one of those kinds of places, then it's clear that you've left the city behind you. That's when you're eligible for Tefillah Sader. When you're going from Brooklyn to Manhattan or Manhattan to Brooklyn, most people consider that like you're still within one big conglomeration of city, even though officially there are two cities, but come on, that's one just, just pile on on pile on when you go from Brooklyn to Manhattan. So no Tefillah Sader has said on a trip like that. Thanks for logging on, and log on again tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.